privacy. It's what people expect when they put their health in your hands. But like one's health, privacy can never be taken for granted. Especially in the digital age, with the increasing ease of sharing personal health information among different healthcare providers. For many years, privacy in healthcare was governed by a variety of laws, rules, and codes. Until now. Privacy in general is changing in, the health, in healthcare. Uh, in Nova Scotia, the Personal Health Information Act is the act that clearly establishes um, the rights of the individuals to access and control their personal health information and the responsibilities of the healthcare providers to safeguard it. Personal health information, the most sensitive of personal information. People have the right to see their privacy protected, but that same information must be able to flow between healthcare providers involved in the patient's care. On June 1, 2013, the Personal Health Information Act became law in Nova Scotia. Also known as FIA, its purpose is to govern personal health information, from its collection, use and disclosure, right through to its disposal and destruction. The Personal Health Information Act applies to district health authorities, long-term care facilities, and the Department of Health and Wellness, as well as to all regulated healthcare professionals, including doctors, dentists, nurse practitioners, physiotherapists, and others. Under FIA, these health providers are considered custodians people entrusted with the custody or control of personal health information. Agents are those that work for a custodian. For example, a pharmacy would be a custodian. The staff in the pharmacy, including pharmacy technician and reception staff, would be agents. Custodians are accountable for the management of the collection, use and disclosure of personal health information in the context of providing healthcare services. Custodians are legally obligated to protect that uh, personal health information regardless of the media, whether it is in paper or in electronic form. And FIA brings consistent rules to ensure compliance. Under FIA, custodians are now required by law to take reasonable precautions to safeguard personal health information, ensure records are stored transferred and disposed of in a secure manner in accordance with the retention schedule. Designate a contact person for any inquiries and consider all requests for access to records. Have a notice of purposes that tells individuals why you collect, use and disclose their health information. And a written privacy statement outlining information practices. Finally, at the request of an individual, a custodian has to provide a record of who accessed their personal health information contained in an electronic system during a given period of time, at no cost. Many custodians uh, will already have uh, policies and procedures to protect uh, personal health information. Uh, FIA doesn't mean that they have to throw all of those policies away. What it means is that they will need to review those policies and align them with FIA to ensure that they are fulfilling the requirements of uh, the new legislation. The Personal Health Information Act is very comprehensive. It sets out clear guidelines for an individual's rights and custodian responsibilities. Under FIA, a custodian needs an individual's consent to collect, use and disclose personal health information except under certain circumstances. The consent may be express or implied. Knowledgeable implied consent is the consent model for healthcare. Custodians working within the patient's circle of care can rely on implied consent when collecting, using, or disclosing health information. For example, in a private medical practice, the patient's circle of care may include the physician, nurse, a specialist, or other healthcare provider referred by the physician. The circle may also include any other healthcare professional selected by the patient, such as a pharmacist or therapist. In a physiotherapy clinic, 
The circle of care includes the therapist plus any consulting specialist. In a hospital, the patient's circle of care includes the attending physician and anyone who has responsibility for providing patient care, including residents, nurses, technicians, clinical clerks, and employees assigned to the patient. A physician, nurse, or organization that is not part of the direct care or follow-up treatment of a patient is not part of the circle of care. For example, the providers involved in a patient's care for a broken leg would not necessarily be part of the circle of care for a subsequent illness. The rights of the individual are firmly entrenched in the Personal Health Information Act. They expect to be informed about how their personal health information will be collected, used and disclosed. With few exceptions, under FIA, individuals can now request access to their personal health information and request corrections. Request a record of who has accessed their personal health information at no cost. With some exceptions, they can limit or withdraw consent to the collection, use, or disclosure of personal health information. And they have to be notified if there's been a breach that could cause them harm or embarrassment. An individual can also make a complaint, and if they are not satisfied with the response, they can request that the review officer for FIA review the response. The review officer in Nova Scotia has recommendation-making power to encourage compliance. So it is um, very important that the, all custodians become familiar with what the powers of the review officer are to ensure that they are fulfilling their responsibilities under the Act. This is a general overview of the Personal Health Information Act. The Personal Health Information Act brings together under one law most of the existing legislated obligations, as well as practices guided by codes of ethics and policies one consistent law to protect privacy and support health care. For a complete understanding of rights and responsibilities, please take the time to read the information on our website. If you have any questions, we're just a toll-free call away, or email phia at gov.ns.ca.